Hey, Teresa G coming in from her cluttered kitchen. And I've got some meal prep to do today, so I thought I would take you along. We'll see how much I can get done before the whole world comes home from their errands. Steve and Trevor went off to do something with his car. And, um, and also I think to go to the hospital to pick up his cat skin and whatever. They went off, they're gonna be gone for a couple hours. They should be back in about an hour. So, we'll see if I can get all of my food prep done. Number one, I have to shred what's in this bag. This is what's left of a four pound pork shoulder that I put in the Instant Pot yesterday. That recipe I will put in my, in my uh, notes in the bottom with the link, okay, to the original recipe. Only two changes I made to this recipe were I used a sugar-free barbecue sauce and I used the keto chipotle pork from Stone Mill, I think it's Stone Mill, Stone Mill, which is Aldi, instead of the spice rub that they created in that recipe. And I used Element, L-M-N-T, uh, electrolytes and water for the orange juice. I do not like orange juice. Orange juice gives me very bad problems gastrointestinally, so I omit it from my diet. Uh, but I am fine with the orange salt and water. It gives you a little bit of that orange flavor, it gives you the salt, which you could always use in the recipe, right? And it gives you the liquid for the, um, for the uh, cooking, for the pressurizing in the Instant Pot. So I used that instead of orange juice. Um, and after, instead of 60 minutes, I cooked it for 40 minutes, I let it naturally release and then I took it out, let it rest a little bit, and I shredded it. Well, I didn't shred all of it, I shredded most of it, and we ate most of it, and everybody loved it. But I wanna shred the rest of it so I can make like tacos barbacoa or something like it, or birria, something like it, uh, later in the week with Steve and I. And I can put it on a small bun like a, uh, like a sloppy joe for Trevor. He'll eat it if it's on a bun. He won't eat it if it's in a taco. Don't ask me. Anyway, so I'm gonna pre-shred that. I'm also going to bread some. I forgot to take them out of the refrigerator. I guess it's uh, kosher. It's, it's a kosher brand of chicken that I found at ShopRite on Manager's Special. I love Manager's Specials because it's, I guess it's, uh, of course, it's hot. they, uh, with the yellow manager special label, they covered up the expiration date. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they? And so I don't know when it was expiring, but probably that night. And anyway, I'm going to take it out, pat it dry, cover it. And these are chicken tenders, I think. Boneless, skinless, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I'm gonna cut them in half or in thirds. I'm gonna brush them with mayonnaise and dunk them in protein breading. I'll get, I'll get to that in a little while. So I'm gonna make air fryer tenders. Here's the, uh, here's what I, what's left of my breading. All right. I'm also going to show you a cool hack for making frozen butter if you, like me, make the egg white bread and you make Indigo Neely's Next Level Butter Buns, you have to have frozen butter for that. I always keep one stick of either shredded or just minced up frozen butter in the refrigerator. Sometimes I make brown butter, I stick them in silicone molds and I freeze them and then I pop all the little pieces out and I chop them up. I know I could just chop up the butter itself and then freeze it, 
or put it through the food processor when it's frozen and just grate it. But I have a lot of trouble with that and then it gets all over everything. I found this to be the easiest way for me. Until I get a salad shooter. I've been on the lookout for a salad shooter, for an old time salad shooter, because that's what Neely uses. And I, it looks like the easiest way to make shredded butter. I tried my rotary grater. It gets all stuck in the little holes and I get more stuck in the holes than I get in the bowl or in the bag or whatever. And I found this to be the easiest way for me. And um, this way I also have frozen butter. I can just pop out some of these and chop them up and use the rest of it for like butter, like fat bombs, sort of. Um, anyway, this is just a, a silicone mold for fresh herbs, actually. You chop up fresh herbs, put them in here, cover them with water and freeze them, and that way you have fresh herbs all the time. Anyway, I use all kinds of silicone molds. Today I'm just using this one. Uh, so I'll show you that. And also I am putting together the butter buns because I only have one butter bun left. And I want to make a loaf and a couple of buns. So I've got my pan set up. I love this pan. Cleaning it is not fun. But no matter how, whether I spray it or I don't spray it, they get stuck in these little mesh things sometimes and especially underneath I've tried many ways of trying to get them to not stick and um, this is the only way I've found that works for me is to put it on a piece of parchment so got my pan set up and so here we go we're gonna do all this all right the first thing I'm gonna do is melt the butter for the frozen butter time a minute all right while I'm doing that I'm gonna get over here and set my oven for 325 because that's what I'm gonna need for the I have weird uh, whatever um all right so while that's preheating, we're melting the butter, right? I'm gonna pour it in there and um, then stick it in the deep freeze. Where in the deep freeze? I don't know. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw out this vegetable hash. I'll use that the rest of the week as vegetables. And um, I'll put it right over here. This has a pour spout. I do like these containers. I've had this container probably 20 years, maybe less. This is like the second or third one I've had from Camper Chef. It's a micro, they are a large microwave container. I've had it in blue, I've had it in black. Eventually, it gets like this weird bump down here, and eventually, that bump something happens, it, it misbehaves. So, all right. It breaks. Eventually, it breaks. Roxy's crying. She misses daddy. Roxy. Roxy. It's okay. Is daddy coming home? Is daddy coming home? All right, so I'm just going to pour it into these little wells. Doesn't matter if the fat comes to the top. Oh, that one went a little high. All right, here we 
we go. All right, so the wells are filled. I'm sticking it in the freezer. Roxy. Roxy, we have to stop crying, sweetheart. All right, see, I already have one already chopped up, ready for my next bread. Okay, so that's in the freezer. There we go. Perhaps you've got to stop crying. we got to stop crying. we got to stop crying. We have to stop. Stop crying. I know you miss Daddy. I know you miss Daddy. All right, so next, I'm going to measure out all the dry ingredients for Neely's next level butter bread, butter buns, okay? Now, one and a quarter cups of water already over here by the mixer. All right, one and a quarter cups of water. Miss Roxy, all right? I've got one and a quarter cups or 100 grams of egg white powder. I've got a teaspoon of Thrive Market beef gelatin. You can use any plain gelatin. All right. Half a teaspoon. That's approximately what this little spoon is. Oh, by the way, the spoon is from Saltopia over here in Hackettstown, New Jersey. They uh, opened a, uh, a brick store, you know, a storefront. Um, and I've seen, the only other place I'd seen them is QVC and also at QVC. Oh, Miss Roxy, you want to go outside wait for daddy? You want to wait for daddy outside? Oh, it's raining. Is it raining? You don't, you don't like the rain. I know Zebby don't like the Oh, it's not just rain. It's, how about this, guys? It's hailing. It's hailing. It's hailing. Just wonderful. All right. Anyway, so, um, comes to Saltopia. First place I saw them was QVC, and they said, hey, they're in Hackettstown, New Jersey. That's where they're from. And I was like, what? How come I never heard of that? I'm only 20 minutes from Hackettstown. If that. All right. Anyway, then I saw Arctic Meats selling because they sell a lot of local, quote unquote, local product, a lot of New Jersey products, not necessarily super local. But I saw they had a few flavors. And so I bought a couple. They had a uh, what they called a block party, which was basically a vendor sales pitch. Yeah. Yeah. And Saltopia was there and they were giving out samples and I bought a couple of jars. One was a cheddar salt, which was outstanding. I love that cheddar salt. And then also something called Basil's Unloaded or Basil's Loaded, but Basil's Loaded, which is very basil forward seasoning. Delicious. So I went over there. We happened to be going to the Bud Lake area and passing by, I think it's Bixby Road or Bixby Lane or Bixby something. So I went, wait a second, that's where Saltopia is. So I had Steve turn in and we found it. We found the storefront and I spent, I think $75 on six or eight jars of this stuff and they were all wonderful infused sugar actually they also have infused sugars so i'll leave their uh website down below i don't get any kickback or no i'm not an affiliate although i'd love to be um but um i really really like their products they're not overly expensive i think it's 15 dollars for a decent sized jar they also have brines and marinades and Himalayan salt and they have um, a, a whole Himalayan salt room which you can sit in you can hire them to sit in it or whatever um, it's a very interesting place 
and um, but that's not what's in here. This is Redmond Real Salt from Utah and a uh, salt spoon from Saltopia. I love these spoons. Each little jar comes with a spoon. So once you use up the containers, you've got extra spoons. So here we go. I have to put in half a teaspoon. Oh, I think daddy's home. So I'm going to put the half a teaspoon in there. A quarter teaspoon. A quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. <sighs> quarter teaspoon cream of tartar. And the recipe calls for a quarter cup of allulose. Lately, I've been using two tablespoons. If you have a two tablespoon measure, then you're lucky. All right, here we go. All right, just have to mix that up. And then once it gets whipped up, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of whole yolk powder and the frozen butter, which I keep forgetting until I've got the batter in the pan and then I have to take everything out of the pan, stick it back in the <laughs> and very, very quickly do it. So, um, okay. So next thing is putting it into the mixer. All right, so we're gonna start with the water. Wilton batter spoons. I have 
the set of three. This is for the, uh, for large muffin tin. This one a little smaller for regular size muffin tins. And then they have a teeny tiny one for the little mini muffin tins. But I use it mainly for things like this, for moving batter. So I'm gonna start with my loaf pan. Corners, move it down. Scooping it out with this. Okay. All right, there we go. That's good. That. And dressing eggs. This one specific one is from Lindsay Murphy. Um, I have some left over. I have Lindsay's version. I have Steve from Sylvia's Keto. I have his version. I've made everybody's versions in the world, I think. Uh, but if you want to buy ranch sesame, do not buy go to the supermarket. Go online, unless you have a Penzi's store near you. Their buttermilk ranch dressing mix is the bomb. That used to be my favorite. That's what I used to buy exclusively for many, many years. They, I am not an affiliate, I am not sponsored by them. I just happen to be buying their, buying their um, spices for at least 20 years. I'd say more like about 24. I first found out about them when I was on like recipe request boards and things like that about 20 some odd years ago, 25 years ago. And on chats, when they used to have chats used to come in every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock and, you know, put in my password or whatever and join the chat. Those days it was at the kitchen link and uh, a bunch of us from across the country would sit and chat about kitchen stuff, which was funny because I had a tiny baby who was crying all the time. And it was a real good relief to talk to women of all ages and I got to know a lot of these women over the years in different ways. They all, we became all like, we all joined together on a uh, chat, not a chat. Well, first the chat, and the chat got canceled because somebody came in and started cursing and whatever, and they closed it down. Or it was becoming very rude. It was some guy, he came in and was very rude and was cursing and the woman who owned it said that's it no no more chat instead she made a yahoo group but it wasn't on yahoo at the time one group one list one list i think it was one list.com and then it got bought out by yahoo and uh, we all started splitting off and making our own groups or whatever, but we were all still in some of the other groups. And um, I'm still friends with a couple of these people 25 years later. Anyway, that's where I learned about Penzies was at the Bread Machine group, the ABM Talk uh, group. It was a woman from Rhode Island had told us about this wonderful 
Urban Spice Company that she found online. And these days they have many stores across the country. I think at the time they were just online. Anyway, they make wonderful spices. Anyway, before this stuff completely, before this stuff completely dies, let's get it into the oven. All right, let's get it in the oven. I'm using my little, my loaf pan, my silicone loaf pan. Alright, so I'm getting that in, and then I'm putting these in. Alright, I'm going to set it for 20 minutes. Alright, in 20 minutes. So I'm just going to shred this up. Decided instead of doing it, instead of doing it with two forks, it was going way too slowly. Uh, I decided to put it into my mixer. I cleaned out the bowl, put in the whisk, and ta da! Ready. All right. That's my shredded, my shredded fork for tacos. Alright. Okay, next we're gonna break the chicken. Yes, we are. Okay, put this back in its place. Put this back in its place. Oh, by the way, I'll be doing a video soon on reorganizing my baking closet. Because I put in clear bins, one, two, one to hold all the chocolate bars for baking and eating, and the other for chocolate morsels. These lovely clear bins from Home Edit, you can get them at Walmart, and you can get them at Container Store. I'm sure Walmart is slightly cheaper, but because they are from Home Edit, they're a little costly but very nicely, very nice and clear. At some point, I am going to put labels on them. I've got one for all my, all of, now I have all of the extracts all in one place and all the chocolate bars in one place and all the chocolate chips in one place. And eventually I'm gonna do it on this side too. I'm gonna to put all the, uh, all the, sugar substitutes in one spot, all of the real sugar in one spot. No, I don't have a lot. And then one for mixes and probably one for etc. Anyway, we'll be doing a video on that soon enough. Sure enough. All right. All right. Okay. Next, I'm going to bread some chicken and get that um, I do have to look to find that recipe that I used because <laughs> I can't find it. Okay, so I refilled up my big jar of arrowroot with Thrive Market arrowroot. I am not affiliated or sponsored by them, but I do buy things from them and I find them to be very helpful. Um, anyway. I'm refilling my container. I have a little container here. It was an old quartz baking powder container. Uh, I've been using it for years. Cream and tartar, and I had to refill egg whites, which are downstairs in the basement. Um, and eventually, I'll be doing my new 
I unboxed it. I did an unboxing of my new stick blender, um, but I have not posted it yet. So I'll be showing you that. And Okay, so the recipe calls for potato starch. I am not using potato starch. I am using arrowroot starch. That's what I use. Alright. And basically using the recipe from the Essential Air Fryer Cookbook by uh, Bruce and Mark. Bruce Weinstein and Mark Scarborough, who I follow on Facebook. I'm on the Essential Air Fryer um, group. Um, also, uh, follow them on Instagram. I love their books. Um, so this one says potato starch, large egg, and then a bunch of seasonings. I'm going to go with uh, one, two, three, three and a half teaspoons of some other seasoning. And then panko instead I'm going to, well actually instead of that I'm going to use this, my breading, and then spraying it. So it says 400 degrees. Coat them, set them in the basket 12 minutes. One layer with at least a half an inch between them. Air fry undisturbed for 12 minutes. 400 degrees. Okay. So I take out the book, I look at the temperature uh, and all that, and uh, okay, I'm going to spray a little bit of this. Oh, I use a lot of these sheet pans for all kinds of things for breading. Half of this. this is a double batch of Neely's protein breading. I don't have a container for it right now, so I'm using a giant bag. Um, but I will link her recipe in my comments along with what I did because I changed it. I added some seasoning. Um, and then I kind of squeeze about half of it. And yeah, the whole thing doesn't go in there. And I might need more, but we'll see. All right, is that. Then I need a cutting board. Here's a cutting board. I know I did not wash my chicken. Do not wash your chicken. You will get salmonella or whatever all over the place. Uh, it looks like it's just two of these. They're huge. So. Thinner, but I don't have patience, 
So I'm going to try and take a little more than 12 minutes. Wash my hands. Yeah. Okay. Set the air fryer, right? I had the Gormia 7 quart from Costco. I did an unboxing. I can post it. I can post it. I can post it in the uh, cards. Okay. Um, it said 12 minutes, right? I'm going to go probably. Well, I'm going to go 14. We'll see. It's going to preheat. While it's preheating, I'm going to I'll, um, brush and get some butter. I'll get some egg. Egg, egg. Put some egg in there. Chicken. I'm 
the top some coffee beans in them. In the protein breading, Neely's protein breading, it consists of pork panko, gelatin powder, she uses beef gelatin, I use beef gelatin, but you can use Knox pork gelatin, you know, regular plain gelatin powder from the supermarket. Okay, you can use Knox, I've used it. Uh, so it's gelatin powder, egg white protein powder, another use, and pork panko, and then seasoning. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm putting it into the arrowroot. The arrowroot helps the eggs stick and the egg helps the breading stick. Okay. And then putting it into my air fryer. I'm just going to keep doing this. So I've got all eight pieces, all eight pieces of them. So, now, of course, you can put the, the, um,
chosen avocado spray. Alright, putting it in 400 degrees. Alright, I thought it said preheated. It said preheated. Didn't it say preheated? Oh well, it's in, it's in on the preheat, so we'll see what happens. Uh, meanwhile, it gives me some time to clean up. And it gives me some time to clean up. All right, so I prepped the breads. So in the, in one, the rolls. All right, so I did everything, right? I breaded the chicken. I shredded the pork. I made buns. I made a loaf. It's just so. That's how you get this out, alright? You have to. Alright. Okay. So, what I do is I take the, the pan itself, I put my hands over the bun, and then I to push the bun, I push it down. I'm normally seeing normally browns on the bottom. Alright, I pulled off too much of the actual because I didn't because I didn't spray it. So you gotta spray these pans, these mesh pans. You have to. Even though they are made out of some form of silicone, you have to. See this one. This one, this one partially bottoms. Alright, but anyway, here we are. Two buns, fully cooked. That's there. Okay. So, looks like that's all the prep. And I'll show you the results of the chicken tenders and of the loaf or when they come out. Okay, so I've got frozen butter. I take an offset spatula. I wedge it in. And normally they come right up. There you go. Boom. Chop them up. Don't do that in a little while. Here's my loaf. That comes right out of this pan. I got this pan on. I think I got this on Amazon. Brand it is because it works like a gem. I realized that I did something wrong with this because it said to put some room in between the two between the pieces, but I did not do that. Okay. I also should have sprayed the bottom. I also seasoned these with something I'll be talking about in a Another video. Okay, I'm going to test. I have this knockoff of the Thermapen that I bought for eight dollars at Walmart. It works really well. Um, at the time, I just couldn't see spending eighty dollars for a. $80 for a thermometer. So I bought this one. And it's definitely above 165 degrees. But 
I'm gonna, I don't think it browned enough. That was 12 minutes, but these were awful thick. So I think I'm gonna spray them with a little more seasoning, give them another for the five minutes or so. I don't want them to brown, but I don't want them to burn, and I don't want them to get rubbery. So. All right, and then I'll put this other batch in. I seasoned one with zesty garlic flavor, and this one was spicy, and uh, that'll be that. Aside from making some beef stew for the dogs, I am done with prep work. So I got the butter melted and frozen. I made my rolls and my loaf. I breaded my chicken and I put it in there and I shredded the pork. I got it all done. Hey, excellent. And only with minimal interruption from the dogs and the family. So that's pretty damn good, don't you think? Um, so uh, there will be some videos coming up. I've got an unboxing of my, an unboxing of my new hand blender and accessories. And I will give a mild review at the end of it because I have used two of the accessories so far. And, um, yeah, so that, that should be coming up. And I've got another haul. I think there's another Trader Joe's haul. And we'll have this video coming up soon. So, uh, hopefully some more cooking videos will be a little bit more closer up so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've been having some camera and tripod issues lately. Hopefully we'll be fixing those soon. Also some mic issues at some point will be fixed. Yes, they will. And um, a bunch of things I want to show you. There's been some changes in the pantry area. Well, what we call the etc. room, which was Originally, when we bought this house 23 years ago, it was the formal dining room. It was never big enough to be a formal dining room. It was a weirdly shaped, tiny room. And there was no way that our table, with both leaves in, would fit in there and have people be able to get in and out of the one side of the table. It was a stupidly built, I think a lot of these houses was built in a kind of a weird, stupid way. But we'll get to that at some other point. Um, but anyway, so that room is now more of an actual pantry area. We bought some shelving. 
uh, thanks to the container store, we bought some shelving that Steve and I could actually put together ourselves without having to hire outside help. And so that is about 85% done. And then towards the end of the year, we're going to do something similar downstairs in the basement and get rid of the old plastic shelving, which is starting to fall apart and get rid of some more stuff. We already got rid of a bunch of junk, but we'll be working on that in the summertime and getting rid of uh, some more stuff and getting rid of a lot of expired things that are down there and reorganizing, putting things in boxes, labeling things, whatever, all of that. Um, towards the, I'm um, hoping by October. So at the end of the summer into October, I would say in that month or two, August to October, August, September, October, three months, because there's no way I'm going to get anything of that sort done in November or December, being with all the Christmas shopping, Hanukkah shopping, packing up things for people, inviting people over, cooking, birthdays, anniversaries, and all that. Not going to get done after that. So, um, anyway, let's see how the chicken came out. Um, hmm. All right. Brown. Um, let's break it open. Moist. Needs more seasoning. It's good though. If I really, really like it, then I will talk about it, and I will experiment with it, and I'll come back to you with um, my thoughts on this new uh, kind of a smart seasoning product that I found on the shop app, which um, is very interesting, and gets a product, gets uh, food into your family's body. A, without them knowing, B, without you really even realizing, and is extremely healthy, and is made with organic ingredients, and, uh, <coughs> anyway, so, 
There you go. Anyway, I got all my prep done. You saw what I did. I will give you the recipe and the link to Neely's protein breading, which is wonderful and genius, along with her recipe for the next level butter butter buns slash bread slash whatever you want. I've made kind of a pizza dough with it. I've made flatbread with it. It's I've made like hoagie style breads with it. It's really, really excellent. Um, it's genius. Everything she does is genius. I have to go heavier on the seasoning. Needs a little muscle. I always cook through, well, 17 minutes. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'll make sure you have the links. Make sure you have the links that you have um, any links to products i have no affiliate links i have no sponsorships so i'll just give you a location to get it if you wish and um that, I guess, on this kind of nasty day. It was hail in there before. Hail. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, so if you have any interest in trying these tenders, um, check out check out Mark, Bruce and Mark's book. The air fryer, the essential air fryer Bible. I think it's called. Yeah, it's just the essential air fryer cookbook by Bruce Weinstein and Mark Scarborough. Wonderful book, full of great recipes, all easily done, all easy to find ingredients, and uh, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful book, as are all of their books, really. They have a lot of books. They have the Instant Pot Bible. They now have the uh, new uh, Instant Pot um, brand uh, air fryer Bible. They have a freezer, Instant Pot freezer book where you can cook everything from frozen. And they have a copycat, copycat recipes, you name it. Fabulous books. Really, really well done, very complete, great recipes, easy to do, and uh, this one is no different. And uh, if the uh, seasonings work out, that I tried on both of these um, versions of this, I will do a whole video on it, and otherwise I'll just use them up and not buy them again. But I think. I think we've got something there. Um, and I um, just hope everybody's having a nice day. Hopefully you're in better weather than we are here in New Jersey. And of course, like, follow, share. Share the videos. Please like, please press the thumbs up and comment because that shows the folks at YouTube that people want to see the videos and if they see it then they add it to other then they add my videos to other people's feeds and those people share it and it goes on and on so that I get more subscribers I get monetized um, and uh, it's helpful to everybody so please I like I, I thumbs up everybody I really like all of their videos I thumb them and especially people who have less than a thousand uh, subscribers like I do um, 
We need those likes. We need those comments. So please, even if the comment isn't exactly great, as long as it's not nasty, because um, if it's nasty, I'll ban it. I'll block it. Uh, but if you have something to say, please, if you have any comment on how I'm doing things or if you have used this uh, air fryer and you have comments about that or if you um, also shop the manager specials tell me some of your best specials that you've gotten over the last few months because yes groceries are expensive and that's why I shop the manager specials because usually they're cutting the price between 30 and 50 percent at the end of the night because they need to get rid of the product and it freezes really well um, so if it saves you some money, saves the whole family money, it's a win-win, right? So if you, have, oh, if you have any other tips on saving money at the grocery stores lately, please pass them on. We all could use that help, couldn't we? Okay, and uh, of course, um, I already mentioned, like, comment, subscribe. Press that little subscribe button and the bell. Because if you click on the bell, then you will get notifications every time I post a new video. And I really am going to try to post more videos this year. I was pretty bad last year and the year before. Uh, but this year, we're really trying to be better about editing and getting the information out to people. So please do. Please subscribe. Press the little bell. And I'll, we'll see you again soon. Reese's Cluttered Kitchen.